we're at war. We're at war with a virus. We're at war with countries around the world. And we're at war culturally. And agonized people have taken the culture war to the streets with raised voices and fists and defiant attitudes. The war with the virus, countries and culturally are all metaphors um, of the civil war waged in a world we can't see. And that world that we can't see is our hearts. I define heart as a human's private inner life, their thoughts, their feelings, their soul, their spirit. And the problem is not that we have a continual struggle within our hearts, but the problem is that we don't remember that we do struggle with our hearts. We don't remember that the, our hearts turn in on themselves. And that's the problem, that we're forgetful. We're forgetful as a people, and we're forgetful as individuals. Although uh, wars rage around us, though, we can remember our heart's inner war. And the best part about it is that we can use the conflict that we have in our inner life to fertilize our own growth, to fertilize our own skills. And then ultimately, because we fertilize our own growth, we we develop self-knowledge, self-awareness, self-discovery. And when we remember our soul's agony and we agonize to, to improve skills in our life that bring beauty to the world, we, we understand our heart's smells. We understand our heart's struggle, the shapes, the sounds, the colors, the contours, the texture of, of our own heart, because the result of our agony and our sweat actually sprinkles ooh and ah upon a fucked up world. We bring beauty into the world and we do so through an honest, remembrance that our hearts they're feisty they like to fight and sometimes they like to fight too often they like to fight itself so if you accept the premise that our hearts fight against our hearts um Chat with me a little bit. Talk to me. Leave a comment. Um, answer this question for me. Why do people forget that their hearts are at war with themselves? Like how do we how do we forget the fact that our hearts just don't don't get along sometimes with our hearts? Um, I, I'm going to take a stab at an answer to why we forget. Um, in Nicholas Carr's essay, Is Google Making Us Stupid? He asked the question, does human progress and technological pro progress, or do they correlate? Do they, if when one progresses, does the other? And he argues that the technology sharpens human skills and he, and, and technology also dulls other human skills. Um, he actually says, I have, or I am, I am not the only one when I mention my troubles with reading to friends and acquaintances, literary types, most of them, many say they're having similar experiences the more they use the web. The more they use the web, the more they have to fight to stay focused on long pieces of writing. Carr and, and his literate friends and acquaintances struggle with reading, an activity which requires focus. And they struggle primarily doing it for a long period of time. And he concludes that it's because of new technologies that this 
old thing that we once did, which was read for extended periods of time, is now doling. When new technologies arrive, certain skills depart. So we, we develop one skill only to lose another. When Faulkner writes about remembering the human heart and its civil war, he speaks as if there were a time when people remembered the heart's civil war. Faulkner, that's that quote that I, that I presented early. And, and the person who remembers the heart conflicted with the heart cultivates creative shit. We stuff our days, at least I do stuff our days with meetings and shopping and activities. So much so, emails, that we've forgotten the skill of remembering to listen to our own conflicted heart. This is one of the reasons why we forget. We just lost the skill of remembering. Another reason why I think that we've forgotten that our heart's civil war is, is raging is people have forgotten because remembering the civil war of the heart, it requires struggle. <laughs> it requires struggle. And certain struggles tug our attention away from everything except the struggle. When we have a struggle, sometimes we're looking everywhere to not have to deal face to face with the struggle itself. And it's almost like a child who resists exercise. There's almost an inherent struggle in a child that resists exercise. Any, anybody, but, but especially children. I see it in children, especially people resist remembering the civil wars of the heart because our hearts are packages with nightmares and welts and scars and private longings that are unfulfilled. And these are difficult to deal with. Why would anyone want to voluntarily remember that? The human heart is resistible. It's easy to push the human heart away because seeing it and feeling it and thinking upon it 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 can bring an unwelcome guest into your house. Maybe even that unwelcome guest of a past experience that you've already pushed out. Now you're you're under you're understanding how your heart's toiling and laboring against itself, and so you you remember now what may have triggered the sensations that are attached to the heart that's at civil war. And when we remember, we look at who we are in all of our grandeur and all of our smut. Like good writing, good teaching, and good art, whatever, whatever craft that you're involved in doing, self-understanding in general comes from remembering experiences and expressing those problems in whatever creative way that you could think of because the problems of the inner heart are worth remembering because they, they propel us toward creative work, good creative work. So let me see if I can wrap this thing up, summarize this thing. Humans forget because it is a skill that has dulled. And it just so happens that we forget a lot of things. But one thing we forget to do is to check in on that civil war occurring in the heart. But the second thing also is that we forget because our hearts are torn. Like who doesn't have a torn heart? And... Not only are our hearts torn, they're put back together again. They're mended. And then they're torn again. I used to have a doll. It was a little corn, like a beanbag doll. And his name was Corny. And I remember him being torn up and stitched up. Only to get torn up again. 
That's like our hearts. Brian Doyle puts it really nicely in a, an essay called Joyous Voladores, where he talks about the literal heart and draws metaphor uh, connections f from the literal heart to, to our metaphorical heart. He says, uh, when young, we think there will come one person who will save us and sustain us always. When we're older, we know this is a dream of a child, like that our hearts finally are bruised and scarred, scored and torn, repaired by time, and will be patched by force of character, yet fragile and rickety forevermore, no matter how furious the defense and how many bricks you bring to the wall. You can break up your heart as, or build up your heart as stout and as tight and as hard and cold and impregnable as you can possibly, but in an instant it could come down. Remembering to observe and work with a conflicted heart may bring unspeakable agony and pools of sweat. But the beauty which comes from the agony of self-discovery is well worth it. Uh, let a look at your heart and how it works grab hold of you and guide you to unleash your unimaginable imagination. Um, if this connects with you, comment, like it, share it.